Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. I'll be your host today. I am Cause. And can you believe that we are done week eight of season one in the War Within? That means we have officially completed two whole months of season one. And that doesn't include the first week where we only had Delves and Mythic Zero. And I understand the expansion came out prior to that. But all we're talking about here is season one in its entirety. And we are two months into the season. And that is going to be the topic of today's video. We will be taking a look at some of the vaults that I have for my characters and some of the other activities I've done but let's jump in and talk about how far we've come in two months of the war within the good the bad and the ugly first I want to start off that I don't know about you guys but for me I am still sometimes in awe when I fly through the zones throughout the war within I still think Blizzard did a fantastic job of building out the new expansion starting from a city above ground and then going further and further and further down into Azeroth where we get to explore new things. Some of the most beautiful memories that I have is flying into Hallowfall for the first time ever. And that still to this day is something that captures me. I love flying through that zone. It, and sometimes I'll take a flight path, go into and remove my UI and just actually appreciate what the zone looks like. And that is something we can't take away from them. And there's so many activities that you can do in the War Within from delves to world quests to outdoor activities. Each zone has its own unique weekly event that you can do the different reps you can grind out all from all the mats you can get for herbing and mining special treasures there is so much to do in the open world of the war within having the ability to just go explore the zones and do some mining or some herb herbing it is such a welcomed reprieve from the grind of raiding and mythic plus so it is very refreshing that to me i still do fly around and i will stop and do a world quest or i'll stop and do a daily or i will stop and do a quest because i'm still not done all my quests yet and even to this day, I'm still in awe on some of the zones. I love flying down into Ash Cahet because you're going from this bright area like Hollowfall or the forest and machined area of the Ringing Deeps, and you're going into the spider layer, and things get darker and creepier, and it's just, it's such a cool experience for me, even to this day. So that covers the zones and the activities we can do, and now let's jump in and talk about how the actual Mythic Plus season has shaped out. As we all know, there's new affixes, and there's a bunch of changes to tanks scaling tank tuning let's jump in and talk about mythic plus now there has been significant changes to how mythic plus works dungeons were squished into lower key levels so now the a 10 is similar to a 20 back in dragonflight and then there's been significant changes with tank survivability and healer output now has this been good or bad first let's talk about the season as a whole starting off at a low level and trying to do dungeons when everyone's learning the dungeons and we're going through these it is a bit challenging it is understandable that at that point you're going to die you may not time keys they may be depleted you're learning the affix you're learning the route you're seeing what adds hit really hard you're also under geared so that's understandable when the season kicked off but we are now eight weeks into the season and i think i've had some chances now to get into 12s and see what that's about with no affixes whatsoever and having to do the 11s and below with the zalatath's bargain i find very frustrating some of the affixes aren't bad the orbs that you have to stun or interrupt are great as a dk i can use gore feeds grass or ring of peace works so i don't mind that apex and then you jump into something like orbs that come at the ads from a distance those are usually okay but when you're in a tight corner your camera angle is too close to the wall and you can't see them coming in you can't get them and then the ads already in a high in an 11 hit really hard suddenly those casts that are going off in grim Batol or the melee hits on the tank are killing dps and tank players almost immediately so that can be very frustrating at times and then there's also really bad boss overlaps mists of tyrannus scythe is a great example the very last boss in mist tradova when those orbs come out most people are either on one side of the boss or scattered and sometimes they get missed because you can't run across because of all the swirlies that are already on the ground so it's a very unfortunate affix when things go wrong and it's very frustrating to play with sometimes and then let's talk about the Vower, the apex that blizzard has basically made a healer problem because in lower case people don't know that they can dispel this affix that they can deal with it themselves and that's a problem no one really prepares you for these things you don't learn how to play your class early some people are still new that is the reality of pugging they, people don't fully learn their class and then you run into these challenges when you get into keys at a seven or higher when things are very punishing plus you have a 15 second death timer the margin of success continues to get smaller and smaller depending on your eye level depending on the group and that starts to become very frustrating so now you have an affix where blizzard started removing affixes in, in dragonflight to make them less healer oriented or changing how they work and then they added an affix like this now devour obviously can be 
dealt with by each class, they have a way to get rid of it, such as dispelling it or using something like Bitter Immunity for a Warrior. You know, and there's just some ad pulls in the dungeon where there's big AoE come out. Grimba Toll is one of those where you have the Lava Bender pulsing AoE damage and then you have an Absorb Shield on everyone that you have to heal through, plus the damage that's coming out. It can be very punishing. And once again, with Challenger's Peril at the 15 second death timer, people just leave because they're, they don't want to waste their time maybe finishing a key. So that is frustrating. And then we look at the final affix, the Void Bound. This is the ad that spawns. And I personally am not a fan of this affix. I forgot to log my last week during the Void Bound affix because I wanted to actually show you guys how much damage we have to do to this ad throughout a single dungeon. But I did check it at the end of most of the runs that I did. And we're usually putting in at least one full tyrannical boss's HP of damage into this Void Bound affix. So that means on a four boss dungeon, you actually have a fifth boss, which is the affix that adds sometimes four plus minutes to a dungeons that are already tight. So are the affixes and changes good or bad? First of all, I want to say challenges peril to me is too punishing, especially in pugs, because when you already die and you lose 15 seconds, not only do you lose that if you're in the lust window and you popped all your cooldowns, you now lose lust, you now lose all your cooldowns and you do no damage anyway. Plus you have a 15 second death timer. If there's a wipe during bloodlust, the same thing happens. So I feel like challenger's peril needs to be reworked and changed. I don't think deaths even should be a part of it. And there's been some interesting discussions around this. And then looking at the other, we always have fort and tyrannical now at 10 or higher, which I think is okay. Cause now trash lives long enough where you can do good size pulls and a ton of damage for the DPS and bosses still kind of feel bad because it's tyrannical. However, I think overall we've gotten used to that. The challenge with this now is that tank sustainability has really plummeted and blizzard's original post was that they wanted to smooth out tank damage throughout the dungeon and that has been a complete miss on their end uh, tanks continue to get one shot they continue to fall over and i talked about this in a previous week where i got meleeed for 15 million in 0.1 seconds and this has happened in multiple dungeons in dawnbreaker and it has also happened in city of threads so overall i think the affixes are on the right track i don't hate them i don't think we need to be in a world where affixes don't exist but i do think blizzard really needs to consider either tuning down the amount of casts in these dungeons and the difficulty because some of these mobs only have a cast so if you kick it it will start uh, begin casting anyway and if you stun it it begins casting anyway and that is frustrating because now if you stun a group of ads they immediately start recasting so if you stun it and people have used their kick at the same time you've now wasted two sets of abilities that will stop these casts and potentially lead to a wipe or someone just getting one shot by a bolt then add the apexes on top of that i think the season is extremely punishing and difficult especially in the pug world but i do think it's on the right track i don't hate it i have reached a bit of a frustration with the mythic system i feel like i am hard stuck in 11s even though last week in week 8 we were able to successfully get into some 12s so last week we were able to to attempt five 12s. I know that doesn't sound like a lot. I did a total of 24 dungeons and we did five 12s. I did do some of these 12s as a frost DK, however. So that was a cool experience. I actually run with a group that had uh, a different tank and I got to play frost. I definitely need to work on that a little bit, but out of those five 12s, three of them were disbands or basically incomplete keys where we just chose, Hey, you know what? This isn't even going to work out. Let's just drop it. And then two of them were just completed. It had a necrotic wake and an era care that were very close to being timed, even with the 90 second increase and due to some just challenges of at overlaps one shots we weren't able to time it the last boss in air is a great example of a definite challenge if people can't keep themselves topped up or if we don't have dispels for the poison it makes that boss very difficult or if you have a full melee comp so there's definitely some issues there but what i've learned with now getting into these 12s is that i would prefer to not have the affixes at all it's actually kind of nice to go into a dungeon and focus on doing the dungeon and i pull these packs and survive with defensives is what it's like in a 12 however when you're doing the apex ones is can i pull this pack and if the apex comes out will we be able to continue to survive so it was really nice running the 12s and not having to deal with any of the level one affixes what i really wish blizzard was consider is that if they're going to keep 12s as such a punishment for very little reward you're already punished on crest you're already punished on death timer you're already punished on on a depletion it would be nice that if they would maybe consider giving you a second keystone that is 12 or higher and it doesn't deplete 
below a 12. So it would be nice if you could, you know, if you get into a 12 and you do a pull and it fails, you have the opportunity to walk out and restart it and go again. Like, I think that would give people an opportunity to learn the pulls that they can do quickly instead of you go in. Necrotic Wake is a great example where that key is so tight that you want to do a big pull in the very first room. However, if you pull that pack and die, the key's over. It's a wipe and everyone just leaves. So that dungeon ends very quickly, but it'd be nice for you to go, hey guys, let's try that again, and then you're successful. There's that feeling of victory, even so small, that when you get through that, you're like, hey, yes, I did it. And then you understand what cooldowns you need to use, what rotation you need to you need to use and the changes you do otherwise you do the 12 you drop to 11 you walk through the 11 like it's like it's nothing and that is very frustrating the jump between 11 and 12 is just too high right now and blizzard needs to consider making some changes to that and the last thing i'm just going to quickly touch on is raid we are two months into the raid season and there are still less than a hundred guilds worldwide that have killed queen anserac there was a massive nerf that went out to queen's anserac today where they took the hammer to her however i still feel that there are other bosses that do need some work as well currently everything after rationon is a very heavy pass or fail if you mess up a single mechanic it's a wipe eggs on brood tester if one is missed you wipe and then for kaibeza it's basically everything's a one shot if you miss the death mass you wipe you wipe in the intermission or people just die to getting one shots due to so many overlaps and visual clutter on that boss overall i have very much enjoyed the raid though the bosses are engaging especially from a tank pov there you're not just standing there hitting a dummy you do have to position you have to understand the movements you have to understand placements look for masks so i have enjoyed it in that regards so i think blizzard did a very good job there however i do think that some of the tuning numbers they can be brought down just a smidge to help some of the mid tiers guilds push through that four out of eight barrier and kind of get a little further into the raid and now that my long spiel about about the two months of the war within season one is over i am overall positive even though i have my frustrations about mythic plus i do very much enjoy the raid i still am I'm doing mythic plus and i'm doing a lot of outdoor activities which we're going to talk about here in a minute but now let's jump in and take a look at what the death knight looks like this week out of our gear upgrades we're going to quickly touch on the gear the io and do his vault all in one fell swoop we only got two item item levels last week we went from 630 to 632 basically just from upgrading a couple pieces and we did get a we mainly upgraded our belt we recrafted it and then we just performed some upgrades on our other pieces of gear in regard regards to RIO, we went into week 8 at 2709 and we finished the week at 2716. So not a lot of IO, but just some small pieces, mainly from smaller keys. You know, we, we would run an 11 and 2 chest stitch a little faster than the one I had. So those are the upgrades we got there. But we're going to open up his vault in Frostbeck and let's see what we get. We're really hoping for something decent this time around. We've taken sockets the last two weeks. So let's take a look. We have Mythic Track Legs, which we already have. We have Hero Track Neck Crit Haste. We have a Hero Track Tier Chest Beast. Now these two, unfortunately, we didn't get our fourth Mythic Boss down, so I only have one Mythic Raid slot. And then for our Mythic Plus, we have a Headpiece, which we already have the Mythic Track and a Socket. We just upgraded our belt, so we're not going to take that. And then we have the Ring, the Crit Mastery Ring. Now this we could take for off spec. And just quickly swapping over to my Frost Spec, I actually have this ring in a hero track so i am going to take this upgrade it straight up to mythic this is one of our best in slot rings for frost so we are going to take the ring so we don't have another socket week and let's see what we get for our key now we're starting with an 11 grim Batol. all right and next up we are taking a look at the warrior we did do four mythic plus dungeons on him his island level has not moved we can actually do some upgrades i'm trying to get enough gilded crest to actually craft an item so we are six crests away so i want to do that before i start upgrading uh so he's still 616 like he was last week but we do have a little bit to talk about with his mythic plus gore we did get a bunch of tens done like i said he has four tens and we did get some time so overall the points that we got are from a 10 siege of Boralis. we ended up timing it for 58 points we have a 10 mists for 17 points and then we two chested another 10 mists for two additional points so 19 total points for miss but we are we got a total of 84 io on the warrior so we did get some more tens done i do want to try to push some more tens on him but with that let's jump in and open his vault let's see what he gets and then after this i believe we have one more vault to look at all right taking a look at that we have mythic track shoulders that we can catalyze and then we also have tier legs that are also already mythic tracks so to save us the catalyst we're going to take the legs 
because that is the biggest upgrade because we only have champion track legs right now and we have hero track shoulders so the biggest upgrade is the legs and their tier that is what we're going to take and that finally bumps our item level up to 617.14 and the warrior has a 10 siege of Morales to start off and last up we have our Paladin. What I did on him last week is I actually healed a two Arakara. The last two I tried to heal was very unsuccessful at 584 eye level. Now at 592, we are a little more successful. What we are 595 now. We did get two upgrades from the raid. So taking a look at what he gets in his vault or opening in holy spec, he should have got LFR hands and the worst trinket possible as champion track even though it is an upgrade over the ones we have i am going to take the sockets because i don't want that trinket and for those of you who actually checked out last week's video if you remember i talked about some of the new farming things that i've started off and I, like i said i was starting to do a gold farm now i've continued to do that gold farm putting just you know a little bit of time here and there doing a couple alt runs doing some transmog runs and so far what we've managed to gather from a, another week we were previously at 150k gold every time i get gold i put it into my war bank every 10k i throw in here so over the course of a seven day period we were up to 290k gold so that means i made approximately 140k last week now most of this was from transmogs versus materials materials sell instantly i haven't done a map farm in a while and, and just taking a look i'll show you guys kind of what my auction house actually looks like i got lucky and found a very rare cloak right and this is kind of what we have in our auction house right now we've got a ton of different transmogs all and but even though it looks like you know these only sell for five six hundred golds when you sell 10 of these it starts to add up but one of the unique items i got is this cloak here it is worth 2.4 million if it sells and i have looked around in other auctions and it is similar i actually have two of these now so if that sells i it will be very lucrative so we'll see what that looks like and so yeah so over the course of a week we've managed to get another 140k and i'm going to try some more gold making methods throughout this week as well and then jumping into our mounts this week, we did get one. It is from T Burning Crusade. Time Walking is the um, Mani Hunting Bear. This one was purchased with 5,000 Time Walking badges so we did get that this week and i do want to touch on one other thing if you guys remember i got the mecha suit quest from stone vault a few weeks ago well because i've been doing some of these gold farms i've been cleaning out my quest logs on my level 70 characters and as i was cleaning out my quest log on one of my level 70s and just kind of selecting not really thinking selecting yes drop the quest yes drop the quest i dropped the mecha suit quest so i can no longer farm that mount i have to re-farm the quest item out of stone vault and i I was very frustrated because it got deleted on a level 70 character so that i have to start over i'm going to try to do maybe just zeros every day until i can get the quest again but i was very disappointed that i lost that quest and have to start it over and that is it that was week eight in a nutshell that is the my two month recap of the war within like i said previously i am in the up and up for the expansion i think it has been a fantastic expansion even though i have my frustrations with aspects of the game I can still say that i do enjoy logging in every day and even doing other things now so what is the plan for week nine we are definitely gonna be doing some raid we're doing a reclear this week which i will be streaming i do plan on doing more mythic plus keys on the death knight i have successfully gotten into 12 so i want to try an era care is going to be the key that i'm going to maybe spam and see if i can get done at a 12 because every time i go in there i am so close i understand the damage profiles from the ads now and i feel confident that i can do that dungeon successfully and then we may try a few other ones once we get a 12 under our belt i will most likely play the warrior a little bit in some alts and as always i will continue to gold farm i will give you guys another update next week of where we're at but that is it for week nine there isn't really a lot to talk about it has been a great week eight in my opinion i got a lot done i played the game a ton i did 24 total mythic plus keys so i'm excited for week nine i'm excited to do even more in the game that is it let me know how your week is going guys how was your vaults what is your opinion two months into the war within what are you still doing are you still logging every day are you doing other things let me know down in the comments and i'm gonna go jump back into kazalgar and maybe into the mythic plus arena until next time you guys peace out